in Chickamauga, Georgia, a respected kindergarten teacher has been charged with the ugliest of crimes. You were accused of molesting three young girls. Yes, correct. There were two girls that were friends of my daughter's and one was my own daughter. Her arrest and the charges shocked the small town in northern Georgia. It's exactly that. It's a small town and everyone sort of knows what's going on. And so this story was the big story long before the national press caught it. And the story was 22 charges against Kraft. From the day Tanya turned herself into authorities, it was ugly. They um, took my clothes off and they had me bend over and they had gloves on. And as they did that, I was crying so hard, I was shaking and the lady even apologized and said, I have to do this. And I said, I know, and I was always very respectful, but it was the most humiliating thing and horrible thing that ever happened. Facing a maximum of 400 years behind bars, Tanya's trial began. The horrid charges spoken to the jury for the first time. Aggravated child molestation, aggravated sexual battery, and child molestation. The prosecutor constructed his case on testimony from cops, experts, and parents of the alleged victims. And she said she touched her bottom and her Lucy, which is what she calls her private area. But something else was revealed, the ugly relationship between Tanya and Sandra Lamb. Sandra was something of a power player in town, and her child was one of the alleged victims. She said that um, Miss Tanya had, um, had done stuff to her. And I mean, she was like hysterical at that point. She was, and I was, I, I was in total shock. Crime Watch Daily reached out to Sandra Lamb and got no response. But Tanya Kraft's lawyer thought it smelled like a setup. Some people would say, could it really be the fact that this woman was ticked off enough to go after Tanya? And I asked that question myself. I think it's a combination. I think it's, it was malice that caused her to repeatedly question. And, and understand this, um, her daughter said nothing had happened originally. Well, Sandra, she seems like she's got an anger issue. I don't know why. She wouldn't let nobody push her around. She was real, real aggressive to uh, the defense, especially. Sandra Lamb stood out to the jury. Then the kids took the stand. How did that affect you, seeing those children be marched in there one by one? Tore me up. I don't, I don't like kids being mistreated. And it seemed like that's what it was. Juror Luther Lawson was flat out disturbed by how the prosecution treated the children. The way they were questioned on the stand, uh, it just seemed like they were trying to drag something out of them. What do you think broke your heart the most with having those kids on the stand? The interview with Tanya Skitt. When she broke down and she told them that all she did was put medicine on my bottom, I've done that to my grandkid. I wanted her not to have to be there, but I had no choice to go through with the only way for her not to be put on the stand because I didn't put her there was to just give up and not have the trial and go to prison for something I didn't do. Then, in a dramatic decision, Tanya decided to take the stand herself. I was one of the ones uh, the night before she took the stand who, who told her she didn't have to do it. 
that I felt at that point we had made our case. And I told them that I absolutely was going to take the stand for two reasons. One is I'm just a normal person and those jurors are normal people. And if I was them, I would want to hear me say I did not do it. What are you doing up on that witness stand? I'm here because I have been falsely accused. Don't you know that you have a right to sit there and make them prove every element of their case? Yes. Don't you know that they're supposed to not have to hear from you? Yes. Prosecutors tried to paint an ugly picture. Are you or are, are you not disputing the fact that there was in your relationship with Joel some simulated lesbian or girl on girl pornography? You got plastered. You were drunk. I had too much to drink, yes. You never grabbed their breasts. You just commented on them being big. Correct. There were moments of what I would call uncomfortable questions, not because she had done anything wrong, but just because they wanted to take every incident from her life and make it into something that it wasn't. And she, she stood there, she faced it, she answered, she never backed down. You wear thong underwear, right? Maybe. Yes, yes I do. Tanya never lost her cool. And so, you know, when we've heard all this about what a busy schedule you had, and you were asked the question, when did you fit in molesting children? Well, you didn't really have to make a lot of room in the schedule to do that, did you? I didn't molest any children, and I didn't have a video camera, unfortunately, on me 24-7. Juror Lawson paid close attention. She got on there, and she seemed like she was a, a pretty honest person. After five weeks, the jury got the case, and Tanya just wasn't sure things would go her way. I went to a local hotel. I went next door. I ordered lasagna. I just remember that for whatever reason. I went in. I watched TV because I felt like that would be the last time I could choose what I was watching on TV. I ate. Um, I showered. I slept in a bed that I felt like was going to be the most normal bed that I would ever have again. Coming up, we, the jury, find the defendant. The verdict and the outrage.